So we hear from so many women who are confused about snacking. We get asked all the time, is snacking okay? And if so, what are some good snacks? And the truth is that snacking usually has a really bad connotation because it's associated with things like chips and sweets. But if you think of snacking in a new light, it can be a beneficial tool to keep you on track with healthy eating. So today we're gonna address the following. What drives you to snack? Is snacking a good habit for you? Is it a dangerous habit? We're gonna talk a little bit about our snacking guidelines and we're gonna talk about some healthy snack ideas. So be sure to stay on till the end. If you're looking for more wellness and weight loss advice for women over 50, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a video. Okay, so let's dive into this topic. Anybody can have a healthy diet, right? But snacking, depending on the what, the when, the how much, can drive you off track very, very easily if you let it. So it's really important to distinguish, first of all, between physical hunger and what we call mental hunger, which is really only a short-term fix and doesn't solve the actual issue at hand, as many of you have, I'm sure, come to realize. So we want you to start to notice that when you reach for something between a meal, just think, is this really hunger driving my decision or is it something like boredom or procrastination or anxiety or some other kind of emotion? At the same time, it could be just a completely mindless habit. Like when something's sitting out in plain view, whether it's something your spouse left out or your kids, or your grandkids, and you just naturally reach for it and you don't even think twice about it. So the first order of business is to determine your reasons for snacking, and then you can address what you're actually choosing. Yeah, that's so true, Jane. And really what it comes down to is awareness. And we work on awareness with our clients all the time. So let's move on to an example. Say you just had breakfast and an hour later you're searching for something else to eat. And this happens typically because one of two reasons. One is you didn't have a well-rounded breakfast or enough, a big enough portion, or you're just mentally hungry, not physically hungry. And in the first case, the solution would be to go back and make sure your breakfast had enough protein, fat, and fiber to keep you full for three hours. And if you haven't seen our PM Meal Mastery Program, this is a huge part of what we teach there with tons of meal ideas, and we will share a link to it below. But in the second case, if there's not true hunger, check yourself and move on to do something else, not using food. And we're gonna go dive deeper into this in future videos. And we also have a blog, which we'll link to below, but it's really an important uh, strategy to work on when it comes to snacking. So here's another example. Say you had breakfast at nine and then lunch at maybe 12, one o'clock and dinner's not until seven. Well, that that's a big gap between lunch and dinner, six to seven hours, that's a long time. And this can play out in two ways. One is you try to hold off until, until dinner because you don't wanna waste the calories on the snack. And what can happen is your body's gonna feel stressed and activate more cortisol, which you don't wanna be doing now, especially after hitting the 50 year mark, because we're just much more sensitive to cortisol. And when you try to hold off from snacking, what happens is either you get up to get too hungry and you say whatever and you end up eating anything you can find, right? It could be something like chips or cookies or sweets, something that's gonna completely throw you off track. And then you feel guilty, you're mad at yourself. No, we don't want that to happen. Or you try to hold off and kind of white knuckle it until dinner. But what ends up happening is you overeat because you're just so famished and you just feel that you can't get enough. So that's not a good option either. Do these examples sound familiar? Okay, so I have totally been guilty of both of those things in the past. But here is another option, and this is really what Stephanie and I suggest. Eat a nourishing snack in the mid-afternoon, which is gonna keep your blood sugar steady and move on to eat a healthy dinner. And the benefit of this is you're not super starving at dinner, so you end up eating a normal portion. Now, which one of those scenarios sounds more reasonable to you? So when it comes to snacking, we encourage you to think of it as a healthy mini meal. And this is something we call intentional snacking. 
So this is one that provides good nutrition. It helps balance your blood sugar. It keeps your energy up. It keeps you from heading to the vending machine or the junk food drawer if you have a junk food drawer. And we also are going to tell you that we understand. We get it. We're not saying you can never have chips, that you can never eat a cookie. We know it's going to happen sometimes, and we do it too. But if most of the time it's a healthy and planned snack, it's going to make such a huge difference and you'll feel way more in control. And we like to say it's like, you know, being in the driver's seat of your decision. So you're empowered that you're making this really good choice and you've planned it out. This is what we suggest to clients and this is what we follow ourselves, which works really, really well for most people. So again, go ahead and snack. If it's at least three hours past a meal, it could be up to five hours, let's say, after a meal. If you feel your stomach grumbling, if you cannot concentrate, if you feel a bit lightheaded or you're feeling unfocused, that can all be signs of low blood sugar and you should replenish so that you can uh, focus again and not get over hungry. Again, if it hasn't been that long since your last meal, as we said earlier, your prior meal just may not have been enough food, it wasn't well balanced, or it might be that mental hunger. So you wanna revisit that first. So picking up on what Jane just said, what types of snacks are best? Well, if your next meal is gonna be within an hour or so, grab something small like a handful of nuts or a small piece of fruit or some raw veggies. But if you need to go more than an hour, say a few hours, you want to have what we think of as like a mini meal. Make it sure it's balanced with a little bit of protein, some fat and some fiber. So examples of this could be something like cut up an apple or pear and have some almond butter with it. Or you can have some hummus with vegetables and that'll help stabilize your blood sugar and help you get to the next meal without feeling like you need to snack. We have some other great ideas, which you can actually download in our snack guide. So we will put a link for that below. But the bottom line is really first figure out if you are really even hungry and don't be afraid to snack if you do need something to eat. If it's not true hunger, you got to work on the ways to address it without food. If you want us to talk more about this in upcoming videos, let us know in the comments below. And be sure to check out our nutrition plan for postmenopausal women called PM Meal Mastery. We've been getting some amazing feedback on this program, and it's all about helping you boost your energy, maintain a healthy weight, lower inflammation, and nourish your body from the inside out. You can find the link in the description below. As always, be sure to like wow. and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future content so we know that you want to hear more. And also check out our next video for even more information on managing weight and health after 50.